hi and welcome to hi who and in this video we're going to be looking at dishonored 2 a game that isn't even a month old yet but somehow i've managed to finish it twice i've recently moved house yet again and not having the internet has kind of helped me smash out this game a few times so where do i stand on dishonored 1 i loved it I think the gameplay and the level design are some of the best. Arcane Studios has some of the original staff members that created Thief back in the 90s, and they are pioneers of creating a relatively linear story with several paths to the player to dictate their own narrative. And this is what's so enticing. One playthrough might be completely different to another because they offer so much variety to the player. Starting off, you are thrown straight into the action, very much like Dishonored 1, being accused of a crime that you didn't commit. The story takes place 15 years after the events of Dishonored 1, and Emily is dethroned from her rule by her evil aunt, Delilah, and several of her allies. During this coup, you are given the choice to play as either Emily or Corvo. Both have their own distinct playstyles, however the end goal of the game is the same. The story and the missions maintain the same outcome, however each character undergoes their own personal development. The game takes place for the majority in a city called Karnaka, which is south of Dunwall, close to the sea. The city houses the majority of Delilah's allies, being the Duke and several other interesting characters that helped her to get to a current stage of power. Very similar to Dishonored 1, each mission starts off with you waking out of bed, having the nostalgic tune play as you get out of bed, you get debriefed, and then you get driven via a boat by your ally, Megan, who is similar to Samuel, and then you get to deal with your target in a lethal or non-lethal way. But this is where the variety really opens up. Very much like Dishonored 1, you are given several side missions to participate in, many areas to explore and gain collectibles. My favourite addition was the black markets, as I could either buy directly from them or rob them blind after solving a puzzle. The path you take, or I should say the paths you can take, are what make Dishonored 2 great. Very much like the first game, the player is given an indirect choice to get from A to B in many different ways, and the introduction of more verticality is very welcomed. There is one mission very early on, which is set on a small island, and I think I spent maybe three hours on that island alone, collecting everything and doing all the side missions. And one of the major complaints amongst at least my friends was that Dishonored was too short, and some of them didn't actually buy Dishonored 2 because of that, and they're waiting for my review to actually see what I thought. And Dishonored 2 can go for a very long time depending on how you play it. I've played it twice, and my stealth playthrough was quite long, and my lethal was quite short. Now, whilst traveling from A to B, you accidentally stumble across some side paths, at which you will inevitably end up collecting runes and bone charms, allowing you to mix up your playstyle by unlocking and upgrading your abilities and giving the player new perks as per the desired playstyle. Having two different characters with two different sets of abilities really adds to the diversity of the playstyles in Dishonored 2. Whilst Corvo's abilities from Dishonored 1 have been overhauled slightly to act a little bit more like Dowds from the DLCs in some respects, Emily's abilities are completely new. My favourite being the probably overpowered Domino ability, which allows her to link several NPCs together, and whatever fate one might have, they all face the same fate allowing me to easily wipe out one room completely of the NPCs. The Shadow Walk ability that Emily also has reminded me heavily of the Creeping Darkness from the 2007 title, The Darkness. And as you may know, also I play plenty of Overwatch, and Emily's Blink ability is kind of similar to Widowmaker's Grappling Hook, but hey, there's absolutely nothing inventive in a Grappling Hook. The brilliant thing about both characters and their playstyles is that you can both play them stealthily or lethal, and their abilities entice these choices. I personally played Emily for stealth and Corvo for lethal, and in retrospect I kind of wish I did it the other way around. The gameplay is smooth, and as expected, the stealth has been implemented beautifully. However, the AI is stupid as fuck sometimes. There was one occasion where I hacked a wall of light, and I think maybe eight dudes ran through that even after acknowledging that it had been hacked. Their line of sight is ultra aggressive too, but I kind of like that. I feel like in Dishonored 1 they were a little bit too relaxed in regards to the line of sight. Some other bugs I did experience were being trapped in walls after blinking towards them once I blinked to a wall and every NPC on that entire map knew where I was. I've had enemies run through walls and I've had a weird bug in a black market scene where a gang was meant to come down and have a conversation with the black market clerk, but instead they never actually came in and I found them all dead outside. The vendor for that black market scene also had no dialogue, subtitles were coming up but there was no audio. The art style still fits within the world of Dishonored 1, however very different 
different as it's expected because we're in a different location. But there was a kind of beauty to Dishonored 1 in the way that everything kind of felt somewhat alien. Karnaka is a dust-ridden but sunny and kind of familiar place versus the dark gloomy plague-ridden walls of Dunwall. You have the tall boys to the clockwork soldiers of Kanaka, then you have the rat plague of Dunwall to the bloodfly infestation of Kanaka. This is a city where Emily rules over but has never visited, and Corvo once grew up there and then left as a teenager. I feel like they had potential to make this city something very strange, but instead they kind of made this city kind of Greek-Italian where there were some weird things scattered in between. But because this is a sequel, maybe just the charm and the intrigue of an alien city has worn off. Who knows, I can't quite put my finger on it. But I wasn't too phased by this. The world is gorgeous and I loved exploring every facet of it. Inside the world we see several classes and groups, ranging from civilians to guards, overseers, criminal gangs and witches, each lending their own playstyles which make you, the player, adapt to their playstyle. Some notable missions in the game was the Clockwork Mansion, in which in order to progress through the house you have to pull several levers in each room to rearrange the house in order to progress. But my favourite was the time mission, in which your powers are rendered useless, but you were given a timepiece, which allows you to transfer through time simultaneously and also view the previous timeline in real time. I know that does make a whole lot of sense, but using time travel as a way to be stealthy as a gameplay mechanic, I really applaud Arcane for looking into this and playing with this mechanic. I'm not going to go any further into this, but I assure you that isn't a spoiler. There's so much more to that mission than what I just said, and I will let you enjoy that at your own pace. It's just a shame that there are so many good things about this game, but where it falls on its face is its story. Normally I play games for the story, but Dishonored 2 isn't exactly a game where I play for the story. Whilst Dishonored 1 wasn't that fantastic in its story, it still moved at a suitable pace and I really loved the characters at the Hounds Pit pub. Dishonored 2 characters were kind of fairly bland, aside from maybe Jen Tosh and that's about it. I found it hard to connect with anyone. Even now Corvo is voiced, and I found him edgy as hell. I mean, he sounds kind of like Reaper from Overwatch when he's assassinating his targets. Went wrong for you, didn't it? How does it feel? Speaking of edgy, I wasn't that much of a fan of the outsider from Dishonored 1, but the outsider in Dishonored 2 is way worse. With a new voice actor and a new approach to writing his script, he sounded a bit like an edgelord. My first playthrough of the game was stealth, and as you know, if you get detected, you're probably going to reload the map so that that stat doesn't go against your end result. Now, in reloading, in Dishonored 2, it takes a long time. The bigger the map, the longer it takes to load. And this was quite frustrating. Sometimes it could take up to 20 to 30 seconds. And I'm on a PS4, I guess that it might be a little bit slower than a PC, but that's a bit ridiculous in the year 2016. But besides these minor on the surface gripes, this is a video game and the main component being the gameplay and the gameplay is so fucking sweet. After playing it twice, I can guarantee you I will go back and revisit Dishonored 2 in the future. It's an extension of the world and the gameplay that I loved so much from Dishonored 1 and I'm keen to see what Arcane Studios do in the future. I really enjoyed Dishonored 2 and I can recommend if you haven't played the first game, pick up Dishonored 1 either full price on sale, I don't give a fuck, just buy it. Let me know what you think of Dishonored 2 in the comments below, and if you like what you've seen here and you want to see more, hit the like and sub button. This is Shawnee Maurice from Haihu, thanks for watching.